more fun. Okay, hi guys. Um, sorry, I'm in my jacket. I'm pretty cold. Um, so my thesis is on civic production in live streaming mobile video. That is video streamed live to the internet from a mobile phone. Um, and just to get to jump right in to give you a sense of what I'm talking about, I just want to show you a really quick example from two different videos. The first uh, was posted oops, quite a while ago, not long after the, the site launched. This is, I did a case study on videos on the site, quick.com. This is the first one. Hi, this is Paul Murphy, Peddling Words. Um, this is a poem, another poem by William Butler Yeats. <laughs> it's called The Ballad of Wandering Angus. <laughs> I went out to the Hazelwood because a fire was in my head. I cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moths were on the wing, and moths like stars were flickering out. I cast my berry in a stream and caught a little silver foot. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> um, that, for a completely different example, this is uh, from Brazil from a producer who is, I think, part of the Brazilian police force. Um, the translation of the title is Outlaws Exchange Shots with the Police and Die. It's a little graphic. Cantando a Zena, nós estamos aqui no Bairro do SIC, onde a polícia já aconteceu uma troca de tiros. Os dois originais fugiram após ter assaltado uma loja de informática. Eles fugiram após ter assaltado uma loja de informática e entraram nesse caminho aqui, numa rua aqui no SIC, uma rua sem saída. Eles ficaram acuados pela polícia e realizaram uma troca de tiros. Um policial foi baleado, a tira acertou na viatura. Aqui nós podemos ver a arma. De um, de um dos bandidos aqui no local. Esse é um dos que estão em óbito aqui no local. Agora vou mostrar o outro para vocês. Aqui nós estamos ao vivo. Ao vivo aqui, direto do SIC. Próximo da JK. Aqui está o outro corpo. O outro corpo do outro marginal. Aqui podemos ver a arma. Ok. Então, so, another completely different use of uh, live streaming mobile video. Um, so, get my mouth back. Um, so really my goal for this thesis is to explore how live streaming mobile video is developing as a practice in general, um, and then more specifically looking at what I'm calling civic producers and how and why they adopt, use, and understand this particular technology, which I'm um, calling a new medium. Um, as I mentioned, I did a case study of quick.com, um, it's a, it's a, one of the oldest sites, oldest, a few, two and a half years old, um, for live streaming mobile video. It's a mobile application at a website, um, so you can stream content from your phone, as I was doing during Sheila's presentation, and you can watch it live online. Um, the site gets around a thousand um, broadcasts a day, which are then archived on the, on the site for later use. Um, and in my study, I found 80 countries. The, the site supports over 20 languages and just tons of phones. Um, so that's just a brief profile, I'll get more into that later. Um, just to sort of define the terms that I'm talking about here, I kind of morphed a few different definitions from different terms to, to characterize what I'm calling civic content. And so this is sort of a mashup of a bunch of those definitions as they relate to my subject. Um, so civic is being public spirited an activity or an event that relates to community or public affairs. Um, and public is, you know, people producing t content are authorized by serving or representing the community, and that all ties into civil society um, and being civic-minded, which is inclined to concern <coughs> oneself with civic affairs or public-spirited, which is different from private or household-based activities, which I term in my thesis personal or other content. Um, so this all comes together to, to make up the criteria that I'm using to separate civic videos from personal or other videos. And I have further categories, which I'll get into. Also, um, on every slide, you'll see little images. 
in the phone. Those are actually still frames from videos live streamed by some of the producers, the civic producers whom I interviewed. So, um, and I won't explain what they all are, even though I really want to, but I could do that later if you're interested, because they're fascinating. Um, so, just to quote Henry, since he's here, and <laughs> he wrote extensively on sort of trying to trying to figure out what civic media is. Um, so on his blog, he had he used a quote referencing, or he had, he had talked about Lisa Gittleman's idea of, um, Lisa Gittleman suggested that a medium should be understood as both as a technological platform, which is a channel of communication, and the social and cultural protocols which grow up around it. As we think about future civic media, we are not simply designing tools or devices that might be deployed to support and sustain citizenship. We're also talking about the practices that grow up around those devices, practices that shape how they get used and how they're understood by the people who use them. So that's, that's I'm using as a kind of framework for my analysis here. Um, I'll get more, more into that approach. Just brief context, why is this important? It's a pretty new medium. Um, even from the time I started studying this, a lot more services have cropped up to support live streaming mobile video. A um, lot of money and industry being poured into this. It's an accessible technology in the sense that it's affordable marginally in terms of you just need a phone that has a camera. Um, it's become incre increasingly more affordable as data plans are more affordable. It's an understudied area. A lot of the existing research really focuses on uh, the, the use of um, still photos and sharing. Um, there's been uh, some good research on um, the potential for te mobile technology to promote democracy and organize grassroots movement um, or to improve local economies and social services in developing countries, especially through SMS, um, but not as much about um, mobile video because it, it really is pretty new. So I'm really, um, I'm analyzing mobile video as a specific medium through which producers can become specifically engaged and I'm offering a textual analysis of content to, and interviews with people to explore how much does have civic value and what does that mean. Um, and just to lean on a quote from Ilpo Koskinen, who's one of the few scholars who's really been focusing on mobile video. Um, he was talking about Flickr supporting mobile video and he was saying, as far as I can say, no studies of the content of pages like this have been conducted. Obviously a good deal of material is just entertainment consisting of funny or non-ordinary occasions in ordinary life. However, more serious content is also delivered through these services. And that ser serious content is really what I'm interested in and what I'm calling civic content. And my background is in video production and activism, so that all blends nicely. I've been using this site as well for a few years just to test it out. So I really wanted to write about it. Um, key questions, just a few basic ones. What type of content is actually being produced, is actually being broadcast online through mobile videos? Very general, um, not just civic, but in general, what, what are people filming? Um, how can we identify demographic trends in production? I'm talking about age, location, gender, that type of thing. Um, how much of content in this new medium actually has a big value, and what factors encourage producers to capture and stream the type of footage? And then also, is there can we come up with a profile of, of the type of general civic producer? Is that even possible? And what are the contexts in which they, these people are producing? media. Um, so my interviews were really focused on assessing the motivations behind production. Um, and then research methods. I knew there was a few ways I could go at this. Um, every approach was a little bit limiting, so I wanted to merge both quantitative and qual qualitative. So I did a quantitative survey um, of a thousand videos over a period of five months. I measured a lot of general stats for the videos, whether they were shot in public or private, and um, came up with what I'm calling civic value tags, ways to categorize whether something had civic value. Of course, this is very subjective. I'm doing this myself. If someone else were to approach the study, they might choose different categories, they might choose a different way of categorizing this, but I felt that this was appropriate. I chose journalistic, political, activistic, educational, and religious uh, for my value tags for civic videos, and then also um, some additional tags for videos that were not necessarily civic, maybe personal videos, entertainment, confessional, touristic, and promotional, just to get a larger sense of what was being produced. I also did qualitative interviews um, with, I, I contacted a lot of people, ended up speaking with seven people. To borrow 
the ghost of Lana Schwartz's um, <laughs> thesis presentation from last year using an ethnographic stance, more particularly as Ito and Akabe call it a techno-social approach, um, which is really uses anthropological analysis to interpret the technologies that underlie uh, social activity and grounded theory methods to interpret, to deconstruct and analyze my, my qualitative data, my interview um, content. And as I mentioned, I was really talking to people to assess what motivated them to use this, what were the, what characterized their practice of production um, and their adoption of it, what were their issues and challenges, and if there are, are there trends that I can identify that are useful. Um, so there's a number of things that I did not study. <laughs> I did not look at viewer reception. It's a big area. I really wanted to concentrate on production um, as a practice. Um, I did not, unfortunately, I had no way to systematically measure age, race, ethnicity, or economic status of producers. I would have loved to do that. I think it would be really a ripe area for further research. Um, I made some generalizations based on just physically what I saw when I was watching these. It seemed like a pretty diverse range of um, people producing this, where they were from, what their backgrounds were like in terms of the context in which they were filming, their homes. Um, I didn't look at interaction. The site supports, if someone posts a comment in real time while someone is live streaming, it'll show up on the person's phone. We'll be able to see, oh, I have two viewers, and one of them just wrote a little comment. I can react while I'm filming to that. Um, really interesting features are emerging in this space with interaction. Um, I didn't look at that because it's also its own thesis. Um, and distribution con of content in the sense of um, every all the people I spoke with cross distributed their content. Quick has really good social integration, uh, social media integration of just with one click, you can spread it to all your your networks. But um, I didn't focus too much on what happened to that content once it spread out into space or if news it, agencies picked it up or anything. And I really limited this to just people within the U.S. and the EU who are English speakers for practical reasons, and also because that's the cultural context that I can best understand. So hopefully. Well, okay. Um, just to give you an overview, I'm going to get into the interesting stuff, which is the results. So that's why I'm speaking really fast. Um, these are basically my chapters, structure of inquiry, um, introduction with key terms, and overview of my argument. Uh, I talk a little bit about the historical parallels between um, civic production and different forms of media across time and the issues then and now, um, especially in public production. Um, then I look at my survey results and sort of break down those numbers, try to identify trends in production. Um, the fourth chapter, Motivating Factors, is really um, based on my interview data with producers and what they were conceptualizing as you know, things that really made them want to continue doing this type of production. Um, and I boil that down to liveness, immediacy, mobility, the real imagined audience, and self-identification. And then in my conclusion, I really I would like to be able to offer some suggestions for um, the design of future applications to support not just live streaming mobile video, but this particular type of producer, civic producer. Um, so research findings. This is a provocative statement, almost exclusively men. It was, um, there are 9% identifiable women in my general survey of all videos. Um, and the numbers, are, the percentages are pretty much the same for just civic videos, 7% women. Um, so this is a pretty male thing right now. Um, there was a, a, a good range of older people. I was surprised I expected a lot more younger people, and that's really not what I found. Um, between you know, 25 and over, and a lot of people in the 40 and over range and the 50 and over range. Again, I don't have real stats for this because I did not measure uh, for age, but I would say definitely more than half were over 40. Um, and also, a lot of this is just experimentation. People were, it's a new medium, people are experimenting with it, they're showing their friends, they're making little test videos, and they're really excited about it. That's the general thing I found. Also, an important insight from my interviews with people, um, you know, you hear a lot on the news about these random people who some accident or newsworthy event happens, and they happen to pull out their phone and film it. And that's great, but that's really not the the profile of the typical civic producer that I found. I found that these are people who are already engaged in civic activities. Those are the ones who are appropriating this. Um, they're seeing this as yet another tool um, for um, doing what they're already doing. And as uh, Scholar Gergen calls monadic clusters of interest. So these are videos that are going to have value within people's uh, circles. If they're an educator, if they're a journalist, if they're an activist, that's the people that are going to value 
the content that they're producing. And then um, one guy I talked to who made this, this is still from his video, the Christian rocker, <laughs> he's in a Christian rock band and he also films all of his church services, so this is what that is. Um, he's originally from Sri Lanka, but he lives in Texas now, and he, was, he and I were talking about why um, my data pointed to more civic videos coming out of places like Brazil and Mexico and maybe less developed countries. And he was saying, well, in Sri Lanka, my family knows about this. They like it, but they can't really pay for it because we don't have, they don't have the data packages they do in the US. It's really expensive. And he said, well, maybe you know, you're seeing more serious footage in developing countries because people are paying for it. And they don't want to just stream their cute dog or their baby, as you see a lot of in the States. Um, they want to film a politician or something that they consider really important. Um, and then I would talk to them about desirable features that they would want to see in future applications. Um, so quantitative data. I only picked two charts to show you, which just overview my the categories that I gave to these civic videos, and there were overlaps in there. Um, and then, as you can see on the right, the most of the civic footage is being produced in public spaces, versus the <coughs> personal or other footage is kind of even split between um, public and private. The main thing to to look at here is I found that 11%, based on my categories, 11% of the footage that I watched was had civic value. Um, and that was largely journalistic and educational. Um, I already talked about the gender discrepancy. Um, the average length was also interesting. There was about two, a little over two minutes for personal videos um, or non-civic videos, and almost seven and a half minutes for civic, which you know points to some interesting trends in people taking it more seriously. They're really editorializing. They're filming the whole, you know, whether it's a speech or a meeting or um, a protest or something. They're really putting more time into it. Um, this site that I looked at quick is based in the US. There are other sites that are more popular in Asia, um, which is why maybe I saw more of a trend of US, Brazil, UK, Mexico, and um, Europe as sort of the main countries out of the 80 that I found in my study. And then I, I investigated hosting style, which I won't go into, but was which was interesting because um, it's just a style in which people acknowledge or don't acknowledge the camera and how they sort of take the viewer through um, through the video. Um, so qualitative insights, this is just a chart. I know it's a lot of text. It's a chart of uh, the people I talk to and where they're from. Uh, they all self-identify as um, activists or educators or journalists. They all cross-post their content in other places. Um, and half of them make personal footage as well as just civic footage. Um, and then uh, just a few quotes from people that I thought was interesting. Um, the real and imagined audience is a big motivating factor for production. A lot of people have an idea of who their audience is or real stats on who their audience is or they know that they're gonna share it within their network. Other people are really motivated, uh, most of the people I spoke to are really motivated by the potential for anyone to just stumble upon their videos and become what I'm calling accidentally educated. Um, so one man, Alden, had, this, had explained to me, I don't have a specific audience in mind. I try to reach out to as broad an audience as possible. Um, I write about anything I can think of, partly to bridge different communities, to get people who think about one thing to try and think about something else. So this afternoon I did a little bit of live streaming of the snowstorm. So people will come in and look at my videos because they're interested in looking at the snowstorm, and hopefully then they'll look over at the Board of Education meeting or look at the speech that a candidate gave. Um, and he wasn't the only one. Almost everyone I talked to was really, even if only two viewers from the random internet um, stumbled upon his video, that was enough for him to, to say, okay, cool, maybe two people learn something. And that was enough for him to want to produce more. Um, so finally, just areas of future research, I really already went over this. Uh, but the, the things that I didn't really look at, the, the viewer reception, I'm interested in also the actual impact of videos. Um, in terms of what happens once they're out there, being used in, as legal evidence. One of my producers had their footage used in, legal, in a legal case in Thailand. Um, you know, whether major media picked it up. Again, demographics, where are the women? What about this trend of older users using this? This is something that should be more studied. And then the nightmare of archiving. Once, if a thousand videos are streamed per day to just this one site, and there's a lot more sites and it's growing every day, what does this mean, not just you know, YouTube's problem of archiving everything, but also for civic content, what happens when this valuable footage goes unorganized. Um, so those are all my issues, and that's my presentation. Um, I have a question about the word 
it's Sue. Um, and I know that you're, sorry. You can't ask that. I know you were, I know you were talking about, uh, you were dealing with this earlier in the early years. I was curious about whether you had come to any sort of conclusions about it. And I talked a little bit. Um, but it seems like there might be the possibility for the idea of what counts as civic mm -hmm. production um, mm -hmm. to be shaped by the kinds of product, the kinds of things that you're looking at, right? Like, so when you go in and you want to categorize things as civic in various ways, mm -hmm. do you think that uh, it's possible that, say, these people who are doing putting up videos for various reasons are, while doing that, redefining what counts as civic, which might make a problem for your category? It's well. interesting you bring that up because I think I missed a very important point. Um, when I was rushing through my presentation, which is that the way that I as ascribe value to these things or analyze this is, you know, interpretive textual analysis. So, like, I, uh, I evaluated each video based on my reading of the inherent worth of the text itself. Um, obviously, someone else might read it differently, but that's how I placed it within these categories. Um, and because that I couldn't really know what the producer's intent was or what, you know, something that I thought was just a stupid, silly video, maybe they really thought oh no, I'm doing this to educate people or I'm, you know, the heads of the value. And that's another reason why I wanted to couple this with interviews with people, because I really wanted to have conversations with people, because maybe there's things that I missed. Um, so it's problematic, because I couldn't, I mean, there's no way I could not be, so that I could be objective, unless I had a team of people that would help with the reliability, but um, no, it's a good point. Well, building off that, it sounds like you interviewed producers who you thought were doing civic stuff, mm -hmm. rather than interviewing a mix of people. Some of them were doing civic stuff, some of them weren't. Right. So would you find, would have found something different if you talked to people? It's interesting because I, as civic? right, when I first started this, I had kind of gone into it thinking <coughs> that I would do what you described, is interviewing both your average viewer who just films their dog or whatever. And I found, let me tell you, really wonderful, <laughs> interesting videos that I was dying to talk to producers about. It really came down to feasibility and time. The interviews that I did do, even though they're not, you know, it's only seven, but it took a lot of time. And I wasn't, I, I realized I wasn't gonna be able to invest that level of, and I really, because I wanted to focus on the ones that were obviously civic and that they would describe this the same way, um, I had to make that call. If I had more time, this is a PhD dissertation, <laughs> totally. I, I think that is, that would be really interesting. Do you have any thoughts on where this whole medium is moving? And Funny you should ask, because <laughs> I do. I think it's a very timely. Um, I think it's sort of heartening and it's interesting that in the six, seven months I've been looking at this issue, all these other sites have cropped up. Um, just this week, Bambooser, which is like the quick of Sweden, um, launched has launched a partnership with uh, emergency services company, like EMTs, um, and, uh, and they're allowing the emergency workers and journalists to use this um, on the scene as a way to get there first and say, here's the conditions, and then emergency personnel will come, um, and it's their private videos. Um, but that's the, one of the first things I've seen recently that really speaks to commercial partnerships or public-private partnerships in this realm, and I think that could have really great potential. And of course, CNN I reports things where you know national out news outlets are soliciting contact from producers. That's sort of the existing model, but I think maybe we're beginning to see a lot more a bigger shift. Is there any evidence of collaborative networks of people? No, but my producers that I spoke with, one in particular, we talked about the, the snowstorm thing in the Board of Education meetings, um, who ironically was on a panel with Henry like in the Dean campaign in 2004. Just randomly, I found this guy on the internet. He's like, oh, comparative media studies. Um, he was saying that that's, that's, I pulled people about what they want in the future, what features they want. And he was saying something that could support that. That could be a way for people, maybe people who cover the same event that don't know each other, but that are live streaming it, to be able to find that content online and maybe pull it down, edit it into a, a larger thing. Um, so that, that is a feature that people want. They want push production, a little bit of editing features after it's streamed, once it's archived, and that doesn't exist right now. Um, and it should. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the question of what's civic, I, I think, is, is, is interesting. And, and I think it's fine to use the term, uh, but it is one of those 
terms, it has the danger, I guess, of, of civic being the politics that I like. Uh, mm. you, you know, and, and this has been a complaint of a lot of civil society researchers. Soft power is another one of these that, that I think has the same kind of problem. I don't think it's, you should throw it out because of that, but, but it raises the question of how to contextualize it. Because, you know, and, and that's sort of, I guess, back to Henry and some of the other questions as well, but so sort of what's the relationship between the entertainment and the civic? And I think you're right that it has something to do with a, a self-identification. It's politics outside the political system. I think that's what makes it civic. I, I, or I think of that as sort of civil society versus government. Um, but then there are ways in which entertainment is very much a part of this world too. Uh, you know, as like I, I always wonder why parents are so terrified of having their children walk around outside. It was a big thing 20 years ago. I'm not sure it's that much more dangerous now, but I know we have a lot more entertainment now that has children being used uh, by random people out there. And I always feel like all this NCI, CSI sort of uh, public sphere uh, then creates, it's, it's entertainment, but it has this political, this, this sort of sense of danger, the need for police, the role of police, why forensics is, mm -hmm. is the, the be all end all. And so, you know, it would be interesting then to think about that relationship, you know, because I also imagine that the people filming their cat or their dog, if you said, you know, do you think this has some civic meaning, they would say yes. You know, I think people don't recognize the importance of cats and dogs. Uh, and, and I think this will help humans be better people uh, and it will solve problems in the world. And, and so I think so I, it would just be interesting, you know. Well, it's, uh, it's something related to that. One of the people, um, Guru Mustuk, who's a Sikh, um, he runs a, a website promoting Sikh um, religion and culture. He's the guy in He Jumped This, which is an intricate chanting session. Um, and he's this guy here. Um, but he had a different perspective, similar to what you're talking about, where he had said, uh, he uses, using my own life and community as a way of being very real. When you have very formal journalistic type content, it's very different. It's a very different field than when you see real people um, and informal type settings. Part of having things this way for me is so that people can see we we're all on the same level and not better or different. Whatever I do, I try to break down the barriers of misunderstanding, prejudice, judgment, hate, in the hope that people will see each other as part of the same. So his whole thing was, what he considered his civic content wasn't just the religious ceremonies he was filming, but like the everyday, here's my son in his traditional way of dressing, and here's our daily life, because he wanted it to be hum you know, humanized. Um, he wanted people to see, to, to break down his understandings. And I, I think that was a really interesting example, and I'm sure that a lot of other people would say that too. And participant observation is a nice term too. I mean, anthropologists use that term, but but often it's in the service of a relativistic view of culture, yeah. whereas the activist says it's participant observation, where it emphasizes on participant and do something. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think you know, that I think that's also part of the civic world. It's very powerful. It's it's journalists too step back. I think usually from saying I'm trying to change. I'm saying I'm reporting on the world, and so that's where it's it's this interesting space that uh, you know like drawing out some of the, the nuances of it to really help us see the limitations of what is what else is out there. And also like what's the difference between how they're conceptualizing who's watching this and who's actually watching it, which right now on this site, this is mostly a community of people producing, not people sitting there watching. Ustream, which is a similar service, has a lot of people ready to watch content, um, whereas Quick does not. And so the, the, there's a disconnect there um, in terms of impact. Formed question in my head, but I'm interested in um, thinking about civic of like the you know, forums for debate and mm. discussion, which it sounds like we're doing an interesting job of like presenting more platforms for people mm. and more voices, um, which is great. We're hearing from people we never would have heard of before. But do you see any back and forth between videos of like people? Maybe, I mean, you can't do it simultaneously, but people addressing each other or right now, not in not. The platform doesn't support that in the way that YouTube will say responses to this, and people can do video responses. But I did ask everyone about what have you gotten in terms of feedback, and how has that been important to you? And every single person, and I don't even know if this is true. I kind of don't think that it's, I don't know if it's completely true, but like everyone said, yeah, I get feedback, whether it's an email or a comment, whether it's just from one random person or someone who saw it on my Facebook page who's not even part of my network, and that really, meant a lot to me and that keeps me doing this. Um, you know, really. 
this off. Yeah, no, I just had a question that sort of, I think mean, does really a little bit. Um, I saw one of your uh, charts, you said that all of the community interviews posted to other, posted their videos. Cross yeah. Um, and I was wondering how, how the whole ecosystem works and like how, you know, like do they put, where do they put the stuff, how does it work in other spaces and how does it all work together? Yeah, the integration that's built into Quick is, you know, the typical sub stuff. So Twitter, Facebook. Um, it actually integrates with other sites too, like Justin TV, other video sharing sites. So, you know, you can sort of with one click spread it, but then also you can, anyone can go and um, share it to blogs or with embedding within their own site. And everyone that I talked to seemed to do that. Um, Actively, because they knew that that's really the only way to expand their viewership. There wasn't a lot of people just randomly watching this. Um, so I think they all know that's important. I just think that the platforms could be, could build up more of that integration, whether that's through commercial partnerships with other sites or what. Thank you.